guys. Welcome back to Our and Toxic Podcast. I'm here with a very special guest, Miss Janet. Hello. You just had a birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. How yes. was it? It was good. I feel like it was the longest birthday of my was life. Was it in a good yes. way? In an exhausted way. Okay. I am so tired. I saw because, your story. Uh, yeah. It was crazy. It was just like one thing after another. So I'm just like ready for it to be over. Yeah. And I've never felt that way about my birthday. That's exciting though. Cause I feel yes. like birthdays can be very overhyped sometimes. If you had one that yes. was fulfilling and good and you get to like send it off on its way. Yeah, then exactly. Until awesome. next year. Until next year. <laughs> Au revoir. See you again. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to get into a lot of things about you, but let's start with the most basic thing, which is the report. So okay. the report is what you're reading, eating, playing, obsessing, recommending, and treating. Okay. But I'll refresh you as we go through them. So Perfect. what are you reading these days? Um, I told myself I was not going to read another book until I mm-hmm. finished the Bible. Uh-huh. So I'm making my way through That's that. That's very noble, very admirable. I'm I'm really trying because <laughs> I have gotten so many book recommendations from my friends lately, and I just keep having to turn them down, and it just makes me want to finish it even yeah. more so. But honestly, what I've found is it is the most practical thing for my day-to-day life, really? especially having children, mm-hmm. because they come to me with like, questions, concerns, Mm -hmm. like things that are going on in their daily lives at school. Yeah. And what I've noticed since I've actually been going through it is I'm like, well, do you know what the Bible says about Mm -hmm. this? And I'm like, okay, this is why it's important for me to get through this. Oh, okay. This is, yeah. It's starting to make sense why everyone recommends this. That's so smart because I I grew up in church. So I feel like I've known the Bible and you learn, you know, in a Sunday school setting, you learn all the stories and then you learn the parables and you get older and you adapt the messages. And I've read the Bible, but I would say I've read it in the the sense that you study different, ver- like right. I've read the story of Jesus. I've read Psalms. Yes. I've read like where all of these yes. verses that we tattoo on ourselves and hang on our walls are. Right. But I don't think I've ever read it chapter through chapter. Exactly. Which- and I feel like it takes dedication and mm-hmm. just like discipline. And also the cool thing about it is just like showing your kids something like you can do this. Mm -hmm. And if you have free time, this is something worthwhile to do in your free time. Like the other day, Collins came home from school and she was like, can we just cuddle and read the Bible oh, for a little bit? And that I has was to like, be the most fulfilling thing. Yes, absolutely. I love that you like mom win. Chalk yes, up. literally. You're bragging to your check, husband. Check, you're like, hey, yes. Yes, I did for our children. I'm like, when did you read your Bible last? <laughs> That's so nice though. And I feel like yeah. it's it's that old saying where kids don't do what you say, they do what you do. So yes. if you tell them to read their Bible, but they never see you doing it, then why would they? So 100%. if they can just watch you, then they'll learn it and you don't have to... Don't have to remind you. 100%. So I will be back on the reading train once I finish that. Mm -hmm. But A Court of Thorns and Roses was my all time favorite of last year. And I read like 30 or 40 books Mm -hmm. last year. Oh, wow. Was that your first foray into like the fantasy world? Yes. Because one of my good girlfriends is all about fantasy mm-hmm. like that's all she yep. wants to read and I was like I just don't know if I can I get know which friend it. and I'm obsessed with her yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love Chelsea her Chelsea is amazing mm-hmm. um and she was like no just get into it and I swear you're gonna love mm-hmm. it and by chapter one I was like oh I don't know if I can do this I and felt then, the same way <laughs> yes and then you just like push through and then I was like I can't believe I've never read any kind of series right. like this. You're like, I can't go back to normal books now. No, that's no, how I'm I fantasy felt. obsessed. Well, I loved fantasy and science fiction and everything that's not real before that, yeah. but even starting the series. And I think it's that way with every new thing you get into it. And I'm like, I don't care enough yet to read through this. So you have yes. to just like trudge through. And then finally you get to a point that you can really Character get development is not my favorite. No. I like to get to the point where I know the characters enough right. to like obsess over them. Yes. And it's always a switch where I go from not knowing, not caring. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I need to know this every is my detail. life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that's how I get whenever you want to like look up the fan art so you can picture the settings and especially in these yes. mystical worlds. Like what do the monsters look like? What do the characters look like? But and you then, don't want spoilers. Yes. But the fan art is never as good as it is in my mind. Yeah. Never. So I agree with that. It's just never going to. The thing I have a hard time with is locations. Like I can do people and I can like imagine the creatures and Mm -hmm. all of that. But the locations are what I struggle with. And I have this thing that I feel like my brain is broken where I can't picture something unless I've seen it before. I have like a horrible location imagination. So you're you're a super visual person. Yes. yes. if If I'm trying to picture like of all the books that I've read, about 15 of the main characters like live in the same place in my head because I can't picture any other locations. <laughs> that so, is too funny. I guess like, it should get out more or like watch more HGTV so I can picture different spots. No, I spots. think it's just like a like a brain thing. Like your brain either mm-hmm. works that way or it doesn't. Or it just doesn't work. That's fine. <laughs> it just or not. it's just broken. <laughs> That's me. Yep. Well, I'm glad we're on the same page with The Court of Thorns and Roses. I'm reading Throne of Glass right now, which is really good, but it's okay. like the, the flagship series, I think, of yes. Sarah J. Mass. So it's really good. I just need to get yeah. through. It's similar to where... 
I think every stage of the book series, there's new plot development happening. Yeah. And you kind of figure out with Akatar early on what the big thing is. Right. And in this series, I feel like you're always uncovering more of like what the plot actually mm. is. And I, I like those though. It's really like it's the great. slow drips are good. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. I need to keep series. guessing. Yes. Yes. You would love it. I think I can't. I mean, if you loved Akatar, I assume you would love this one. Yeah. It's a little bit more fantasy based, but it's just as like gripping and I love it. So it's going to have to get into that. My comfort read. Yes. Okay. What are you eating these days? Do you have a favorite food or a snack? Oh, favorite foods and snacks are so hard for me because I like go through obsessions. Mm -hmm. Like I make myself eat something so much that I get sick of it. Mm -hmm. um, so right now I, I don't really have a big obsession. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to Korea here in town. Yes. It's I thought literally... you were going to say the country, and I was like, which one? No. I haven't been. <laughs> but yeah, no, the restaurant. It I is love. literally so good, and I'm obsessed with the spicy peanut chicken. Mm -hmm. So if anyone hasn't tried that, it's like a must yes. try. It's almost like a – it's like a chipotle if it were – better yes and it's if more it was like a, real yes yeah. yeah yeah exactly and it's local but it's it's like a thai food kind of yes so like it's spicy i don't know it's just different it's so good i get the yes. spicy bulgogi and every time i go i'm like Ooh. psyching myself up to say bulgogi because i can't no say i it. literally won't order it because i don't know how to say oh, it can i get a number seven yes that's what <laughs> i like, need to do because okay. it looks good but i it's literally really can't say the word so mm -hmm. i'm like i'm just not gonna embarrass myself oh yeah and it comes in that like hot cauldron that yes. just keeps your meat so warm that you can't even eat it and then i love burns that you call it a cauldron what else is it it's called a hot stone. <laughs> it's called the hot cauldron. I, I, I don't order start, that. Way. I'm going to pick that up, actually. I'm just going to take say, that with me. Just order it. Just order number seven. Don't ask for that again. <laughs> like, turn around that and get out of here. That is amazing. You're definitely reading fantasy. I know. Right I got to get back into the real world, I guess. But Okay, so we're eating lots of Korea. What yes. are you playing as far as podcasts, songs, audiobooks? Oh anything? my gosh. I am obsessed with Megan Maroney. Mm -hmm, me too. Obsessed with her right now. I agree. I am like, Ashton is like, please stop playing these songs over mm -hmm. and over. But I'm like, I can't. Her mm -hmm. voice is so good. Yes. And, and she's like one of the most beautiful people I've ever yes, seen in my entire life. Exactly. So I I'm followed like, her since. I'm obsessed with you. I'm right yeah. there with you in the, yeah. in the fan club. But I, I remember following her back when she was in a sorority. And I was like, she is so. Really? I followed her for probably seven no years, eight years. Because she was one of the just college influencers that just. Okay. I don't want to say she's famous for being hot. I, but I at did the beginning, not know that. That's yeah. amazing. She's been she's been famous for a while, at least in the influencer space. And I used to follow her fitness page because she had like Megan Maroney fit, and it literally inspired me to start You're my literally own. Literally blowing page. my mind right yes, now. Yes, like I I was such a fan. Like she had her page, and I was like I should start a fitness page. And then I called it <sighs> Hannah McClellan Fit because I'm yes. so creative. And yes. she I don't know why I unfollowed it, or maybe I just followed it from my personal fitness page, and yeah. I don't have that account anymore. So I tried to go look it up because I'm like that's so cool. Like now she's famous, right? And I don't have access to it because it's private, oh. which makes sense because she's very famous now. But Interesting. she's so cool. I thought like just seeing her whole rise to stardom has been amazing. And yeah. She's so talented and funny. And I literally feel like she came out of nowhere for mm -hmm. me. So now knowing that she had like previous mm -hmm. stuff going on, I want to like go dig yeah. through it. It's so interesting. I did see her in someone's, I have no idea. I was just scrolling one day and she was like randomly in this girl's TikTok, like in the background. And mm -hmm. I was like, wait, what? It's like when they exist outside of the world that you expect yes. them to be in. You're like, where are you? You're it not was on this show. so crazy, mm -hmm. and she was definitely younger, yeah. so it makes sense mm -hmm. that she was in that space before. Which, that psychs me out too. Like the fact that she was graduating college, and I, I don't know if she's because I'm 25, so I don't know if she's younger than me or like right at my age. I don't know. But with people like Alex Earl who are 23, and I see them, I'm like, this is not okay with me. Which that blows my mind that she's 23. I know she does not. I feel like people nowadays look so much older mm -hmm. than they actually are. Mm -hmm. Yep, it I is fully wild. Agree. Meanwhile, I'm like trying to figure out how to lose like my like round cheeks that I've had since I was 15 and I'm like it'll happen how does this happen to me it'll happen I swear one day I just woke up and I was like Ashton do I even look like the same person mm -hmm. like my baby face is gone yeah and it just happened so gradually but I it will happen I mean I'm holding on to it I've seen that graphic that everyone's seen of like Margot Robbie which come on I'm not gonna have that kind of <laughs> transformation but Margo. you know you see people that just like their whole face it's like all of a sudden just like you know, cheekbones. Like, like, where'd you come yes, from? So I literally. love that. But I, I think she's she's well spoken and everything else too. But this yeah. is about you. This isn't about these other two oh, yeah. blonde, beautiful people. What about, about you? <laughs> so listening to Megan Maroney, do you have a favorite song? Yes. Um, I feel like it right now. It's Lucky. Love that one. Yes, because I feel like she has a lot of 
I mean, she says that she plays a lot of black keys, but mm-hmm. it's so true. Like they're very like melancholy, mm-hmm. like kind of depressing. And that I one's like actually that. fun. Yeah. And yeah. I get to enjoy her mm-hmm. voice. So I love I that. That's it. I love a sad song though, even if I'm in the happiest time oh, of my yeah. life. So does Ashton ever look at you and he's like, are you okay in our marriage? Like, why are you crying to these no, songs? No, it would take a lot for Ashton to do that. We've been <laughs> together for 12 years. That's what I was going to say. Like, you're in, like, the happiest marriage. So yes. listening to these emo cowgirl songs is, is hilarious. I know. It's kind of like I have to dig deep for, yeah. <laughs> for something to come up with this. Yeah. But, yeah. You're, no, like, imagining. He's just, like, she's just having her little moment. Yeah. yeah. And he's she's like fine. Pretending. You yeah. have to cosplay as somebody who's going through a breakup. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Put yourself into, like, a fantasy character's shoes. It'll be exactly. good. I love That's that. That's what we have to do for Megan. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I have a lot of um, crying playlists because you have to get in the mood. So I have my <laughs> my country crying playlist. Your playlist crack me up. I have too much fun with it. It's like my Pinterest yeah. boards. There's one for way too many occasions, but I have my banjo tears, which is my crying one for country Amazing. occasions whenever yes. I'm feeling kind of yeehaw and sad at the same yes. time. Yes. So I'm going to add a lot of her songs to that. Oh, perfect. Next. What are you obsessing over? Obsessing Literally over... Um, I'm obsessing over my kids. Aww. Absolutely. Like they're just at the funnest age right now um tell us all about them they are literally I don't know like at some point when you're a mom kids become not babies but like little humans Mm -hmm. and so they're just getting to that age where it's like we have full converse I mean obviously we did before but they weren't like about anything right, in particular. Right. And it's more now, like you keeping them alive than them yes. being just around you. Right. And now they're just like, I don't know, they're just so smart and creative and funny and they're like trying to figure out mm-hmm. who they are. And so like, I just want to be yeah. all into that right now. Well, you your know? son had a birthday. How old is he now? He's five. Five. So now I have a five and six year old. Wow. Because my kids are only 21 months That's apart. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Is that considered like Irish twins or what is the cutoff for that? I don't know what the cutoff is for mm-hmm. that. I would assume it'd be less than 24 months. Yeah. Well, they're pretty It close. might be 12 months actually maybe, for Irish maybe. twins. I don't know what I'm talking about ever. Yeah. So that's <laughs> important to know. We're just making things yeah. up right now. Don't take it. Yeah. There's a big asterisk by the podcast. I don't know what I'm saying ever. Do you have a favorite like activity that you get to do with them? I know you just came hot off summer. You guys were all over the place. Oh, What's yeah. I mean, swimming with them is obviously my favorite. But um, other than that, just like taking them to Silver Dollar City is yeah. so much fun. I love that. Because crew has gotten so brave. Like he was terrified last year mm-hmm. of all of the rides. And this year he's like, Mom, I want to do this. Mm-hmm. And so he went on everything that he's tall Aww. enough for, which is pretty much every oh, single yeah. ride, except for, for like one. So it's been cool to see him like become more boyish yeah. and brave which one takes more after you and after ashton oh my gosh <laughs> collins is all ashton mm-hmm. like she has oh, so no funny. breaks mm-hmm. she is all gas like just has no fear which is funny and for an oldest child because i feel like it's usually flipped where the youngest is crazy. yes i totally agree but like she's also super witty mm-hmm. and she's very like I don't want to use the word manipulative, but she's very smart she's, in the way that she pieces yeah, things say, together. <laughs> she's socially intelligent. Is what yes, I like to say. she really is. And then crew is like me. Like we like to slow roll things. We mm-hmm. like to do things at our own pace. We like to make sure things are how we want them. Otherwise we can't move forward. Right. Like we're just, it's kind of that. crazy that we're flip flop mm-hmm. though. That is so funny. I feel like that's the stereotype is that the oldest child, the oldest daughter specifically, is yeah. very by the book, very almost timid and like nervous, neurotic because they want everything to go well. Right. And the youngest child is the one that has to like wear a helmet all the time because they're jumping off of things. So yeah. I it's love that you flip that around. Definitely flipped. So we do not have second child syndrome. Yeah. He's crazy. But like in a different way. But in a different way. I love that. That's yeah. so exciting. So we're obsessing over the kids. They're beautiful, by the way. Thank you. Is Ashton mad they both look just like you or is he? Okay, <laughs> They do not look like me. I, I think, think they do. They look like him oh really yeah maybe because he's got like the beard and he's a man and it just I don't know they both have his eyes like Mm -hmm. he has very big almond eyes that Mm -hmm. I love and I'm so jealous of Mm -hmm. and I'm so glad both of our kids got those because I'm like yes like that's the one thing that just like I, I do know. love that. Yeah, brightens their face. So. I feel like they look so much like you, though. So oh, maybe you just don't see you. it. But I don't. I don't. I think I don't think parents can really see themselves mm-hmm. in their kids. You have to wait till you're told. Like, yeah, you write that down, please. Like, tell me they look like me. Yes, it's the best compliment. Mm-hmm. I tell people that all the time. If they ever say my kids look like me, I'm like, that is the best compliment. Oh, that's so sweet. Well. Yeah. You heard it here. Kids Ooh, look just like you. Yes, I grew up, my I brother is like it. a carbon copy of my dad. And so we, yeah. all the time, everyone was like, oh my gosh, you can tell he looks just like Chad. And my mom, I also grew up hearing how stunning she is. Like she's beautiful, dark haired, tan, mm-hmm. everything. Guess what I didn't hear? 
<laughs> you look like your mom. <laughs> not once in my life. And I think partly because I've always had red hair and I was really fair skinned whenever I was growing up because I, not because I couldn't tan because I stayed in the yeah. house all the time and didn't do anything. But it wasn't until I got way, way older and like now I sometimes get, maybe. I was going to say, but, I think you look like your mom. Well, thanks. especially after doing that photo shoot with y'all. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is the same we thing. Act very similar, yeah. which is good whenever I'm like in a good mood. But if I'm like, <laughs> if my mom and I are giving each other attitude, it's not so good. Then we need to step yeah. part ways. I'm like we're too yeah. similar. I learned yeah. this from you. But it's one of those things like everyone's like, oh my gosh, your son looks just like your dad, like yeah. to, or to your husband. And then they're like, oh, your daughter is cute too. But like, <laughs> never no, like I the resemblance. I think more as you get older yeah, too. That's for sure. True. That's yeah. true. Well, she's never had Botox, never had fillers. She's just like rocking what with- What an absolute blessing I for know. her. Me and mommy, I'm like, I'm, What's it I'm like due. to be God's favorite? <laughs> That's what like, I always tell her. Yeah. And she's like used to use tanning beds all the time. Like no wrinkles, looks amazing. So I guess I took after my father, unfortunately, in uh, that regard. But man. it's not about me. So what are you recommending? <laughs> Actually, let me um, answer this for you. You can go to her Amazon storefront and find out what she's recommending. That's true. Use yes. the affiliate links. Go, go to the, all the links. Mm-hmm. Um, recommending right now. Oh, my gosh. I actually just put this on my stories last night. It is the most random thing. Mm-hmm. But did you see it by chance? I it saw was... all your stories. <laughs> Whenever you're like, I'm talking to my husband again. <laughs> it was research. Okay. No. Okay. But it was um, this chin like strap yes. thing that you sleep in. I've seen those before actually. So whenever you posted it, I wasn't, I wasn't that put off by it. Like really? I, I can see it. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was like, this is going to be a hard no for some people. And honestly, I had to warm up to it a little bit, mm-hmm. but I feel like I've been wearing it for like two weeks and I can already feel you like look snatched. some snatching. Mm-hmm. Well, so, I know that I used to work with a plastic surgeon that would use those after facelifts or after different things. Cause it helps yeah. with swelling and helps with drainage. Okay. And it's, I assume the same technique is a gua sha where you're like pushing the fluid out of your jaw and you're you and know, I can't do gua sha's like I feel yeah. like I'm just scraping my skin it made so. me break out I think because and I was keeping mine that clean too. but I think that you just can't keep it clean enough and my skin's so sensitive yeah. that I was using it and I felt like it was like slimming in a way like it does help yes. to define your jaw and I felt like I was depuffing I shouldn't say slimming yes. but depuffing for sure and then I kept breaking out along my jawline and like, I this isn't worth it to me. Thing. Yeah. And I was also like, I don't want to spend 20 minutes of my evening yeah. where I already have like all mm-hmm. the steps for skincare. Mm-hmm. I don't want to add this in. Yeah. So the nice thing is Sounds you put go. it on, you fall asleep. Mm-hmm. The first night I will say, you're going to be like, I can't breathe. Mm-hmm. But then yeah. I don't know. You just get used to that it and nice. it's fine. Well, yeah. you guys heard it here first. Yes. We'll put some links up for you. Some jaw snatching. And we can all use that, especially as yes. we're going into inflammatory food season. Literally. And those are my favorites. So <laughs> we Same. have to eat them. Same. Um, speaking of, what are you treating yourself to? <sighs> Let's see. I used to not be a big sweets person, but I feel like lately, I feel like you can mm-hmm. relate to this. You're oh, a I big can. sweets girl. Big sweets girl. Um, so there are these little like sweet tarts, but they're two in one. So it's hard Ooh. on the outside. And then um, like the softer on the inside. Yes. They are so stinking good. Um, and I souls. cannot stop eating them. That's how I feel about nerds clusters. Cause they have like the crunchy nerds in the outside. And then you're like, going to love these yeah. because I it's also stop, two though. flavors. <laughs> I really do. I'm no, you don't. I, no, you don't. It's okay. 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 You're fine. Yeah. You're right. I mean, every, anyone who listens is going to be like, I say every single week, I'm trying to cut back on candy. And then every single week, I'm like, I found a new candy. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm posting on my stories eating nerds clusters point, again. It's a game to like yeah. find new candies mm-hmm. that I like. So. I need to stop because I, I do care about my health. I know it doesn't seem like that, but then I go online and everyone's talking about red 40 and endocrine disruptors. I and I'm like, I love But at some candy. point, we have to live our lives. I agree. You know I what I mean? Like it's a fine balance. Mm-hmm. I try to do fasting. Mm-hmm. I try to do whatever, all the things organic. Yes. But like at the end of the day, if I want some candy, I'm going to eat, gonna some eat candy. candy. I, yeah. I fully agree. Well, I've yeah. always said the 80-20 model is the best way 100%. I would describe how I eat. It's not, yeah. I don't stick to any particular diet. I, I'm trying to eat more protein and less sugar, but that's like always, it's an ongoing goal. It's an right. ongoing battle. It's but never going to go away. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like if most of what we eat is is good for us and nutritious and the rest of it is kind of where you can have your fun and yes you know shout out on the the sweet tarts enjoy your life <laughs> exactly yes. so that's been a lovely report now let's talk about who you are as a person so we oh met Lord. through the american <laughs> cancer society making strides yes. against breast cancer committee it's a mouthful. yes absolutely and i've known about you for a while just because you've been Same. in the pr space and marketing right. and i just thought you were so cool but then meeting you i i say this with every like pretty oh girl that I talked to. I'm like, I thought you were going to be so mean. I don't know why I have this. <laughs> I thought you were going to meet me and be like, hi. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because I no. also was the youngest one on the committee. So I'm like, I'm coming yes. in. You guys are established. You've done this before. And yeah. I've done lots of nonprofit work, but 
being the youngest person in any space, you just feel like you don't bring enough to the table or you don't have enough right. experience. So coming into the committee, I knew that you'd been, you know, you've done PR for these big companies. You've done yeah. so much. Like you obviously have experience and you bring a lot to the organization. So I was like, she is going to not be nice. And then oh you, on the contrary, have been the nicest person like that I've ever <laughs> that met. So you're funny. so kind. You're so friendly. You're so supportive online. Like you just are such a girl's girl. And I Thank cannot you. say enough good things about how nice you are. Well, that's funny that you say that because one of my very best friends, Jody, whenever mm -hmm. she she loves to tell me the story, she was like, I wanted to hate you when I met you. <laughs> but then you were so nice. And I was mm -hmm. like, I think that a lot of girls, it's not me and you. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not just us. But like when we meet other girls who we perceive as like, influential, powerful, mm -hmm. smart, pretty, whatever. Mm -hmm. We have this like immediate thing like, oh my gosh, they're yeah. going to be mean. It's like a stigma. You it just is. assume. And I, I haven't, and I hate it. I've had the same bad experiences with girls that I'm sure everybody has, but yeah. nothing that's been overwhelmingly negative to the point that I should be scarred from that. Right. But I think it's just a societal stigma that we assume that if they have these things going for them, they should be mean. And that's right. not, and been not approachable. Exactly. It's kind of like we put them on a pedestal mm -hmm. and we're like, surely they're not going to relate to me. Right. Right. And that's silly. Yeah, exactly. Absolute silliness. But it was so. a pleasant surprise to meet you and find out that you're delightful. <laughs> actually. Same. So. I was actually like nervous to meet you too. Cause I was like, she's so young and cool. Oh my God. Like, I don't you. know how I'm going to come off because <laughs> no. I'm way older than her. So I feel that I'm, especially now that I've gotten into the point of my career where I feel like I can express myself more and yes. be more like, odd online then yeah. I feel like I I get insecure in some professional settings because I know that I've like I'm posting about these like comic books or I'm posting right. about whatever and it doesn't seem as polished even if that's like all of us have our interests and our hobbies that aren't Absolutely. necessarily like mainstream or cool but you get into your own head and think this is gonna make me weird and I'm not gonna fit in with people sure so no I, I get that you. I mean I literally take videos of myself getting dressed online. So I love it. Whenever people meet me, I'm like, what do they think? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I do want to get into all that. I have many questions. Okay. You know, you know, I've sent you a long outline. Yes. <laughs> um, so that's how we met. And I think that you're fantastic as we just discussed, but what is your involvement with ACS? How long have you been volunteering with them? So, um, actually Brie approached me right after I left Bass Pro mm -hmm. and she was like, I just need someone that's been in that space before that can help like with events and stuff. And really we've tiered it more towards the event side mm -hmm. of it than the media side of it, which I actually loved because I loved doing the events yeah. in my you previous role. And so, yeah, it's been great. I love working with Brie. I love the whole team and it's committee amazing. it's literally just a powerful group of women mm -hmm. who feel comfortable like expressing themselves and like mm -hmm. bossing up to the challenges so it's Absolutely. been amazing no it's been the, the most fun experience to, to yeah. be a part of I look forward to every meeting it's so fun speaking of your previous role you yes. worked at Bass Pro I tell did. me everything about that how you got started how oh, you got gosh. into it did you always want to do PR did yeah. you study PR just start from the beginning okay so I studied PR at Missouri State and I was actually in education first mm -hmm. and I switched over because back then there was nothing online, by the way, there was like a catalog of all of the degrees that you could pick. And so I read through pages and pages. Anyways, I finally read about PR and it was like this glamorous thing. And I was like, Ooh, mm -hmm. I'm picking that. So I got into PR, absolutely loved my classes, thrived, still have many friends like at MSU who are teaching currently. I actually taught at MSU. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. A lot of people don't, but I taught public speaking at MSU for three years Wow, and it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. Like one of my favorite jobs. That sounds today. like what most people would consider a nightmare. So uh, it's amazing that you thought I it was know, fun. I know, literally, but I love public mm -hmm. speaking. I've always been a huge fan of it. I think if you can do that, you can literally take over the world. Mm -hmm. So public speaking, if you can get that in your back pocket, definitely want to do it. I fully agree. So did that. And then, um, right out of college, well, I taught, but then right out of that, um, I was connected with someone who was working at Bass Pro and they said, Hey, I know you graduated with a degree in PR. We're hiring on the hospitality side. Mm -hmm. So it was technically through Big Cedar. Mm. So I applied for the job, interviewed, loved the guy who was interviewing me, Jason. And we just like clicked and it seemed like it was going to work. So I got the job and then I was there for like six and a half years. That's so exciting. For seven, I don't know how many years, yeah. but a long time. Oh, oh, a bit. Yeah. yeah just so what while. were, what were the things under your jurisdiction? Like what was your day to day like? What kind of things were you Oh over? my gosh. Yeah. So the day to day was never the same, which is one which of the good. things that I loved about the job. 
is that I never knew what to expect on a day-to-day basis. One day it would just be like answering emails all day and getting caught up and like being a corporate girly, Mm -hmm. which I loved those days. Oh yeah. And then other days I would get a call before I would even get to the office and be like, hey, so we are actually going to launch a whole new business today and we need a press release yesterday. Mm -hmm. So let's get going Mm -hmm. and like putting together a whole plan. So yeah, every day was different, but it was never boring. Do you feel like your education was adequate in equipping you for the job or do you think that a lot of it was on the job training? So I, it's kind of a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Obviously I studied things like public speaking, which I used so frequently in that position. And then other things you're just never going to be trained for because every corporation does things differently. Mm -hmm. So like some corporations, they want to have this like really neat laid out plan, which we did so much of there Mm -hmm. but a lot of it was we just have to be ready to shift Mm -hmm. like on a moment's notice and some corporations don't operate that Mm -hmm. way so honestly I think I got the best experience in the world because I learned to be flexible light on my feet Mm -hmm. you know just like right take this pivot back and run absolutely so it was one of the best experiences of my life what were your favorite and least favorite things that you got to do slash had to do on the least favorite side Okay. Favorite things that I got to do were the events Mm -hmm. by far. Like they were so much time and effort, but like to see them unfold and see like literally whole communities come together and enjoy them Mm -hmm. and like benefit from them. And just like, I don't know, enjoy a whole new side of the Ozarks. I tell people all the time, I didn't fall in love with the Ozarks until I started working for Johnny Morris Yeah, because I just saw them in a whole different way. You should pay you to say that. That was good. trademark Mm -hmm. um but anyways it's just I so fell in love with Missouri and that was one of my favorite things that happened on the job was just seeing like the actual beauty of what we live in Mm -hmm. and how we shouldn't take it for granted absolutely one of the least favorite things about the job would probably be I mean I kind of just talked about it but just like not knowing what the day-to-day was so Some days I would come in looking like an absolute troll Mm -hmm. and um, I would get a call and they'd be like, hey, we need you to do an interview on KY3 in five minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, oh, my gosh. Can I use a body double? Like, yeah, it was just I would have loved more heads up for things like that. But Mm -hmm. again, like you're it's just never going to be that way for every job. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I would say that was probably the hardest part about it was just like moving quick and just Learning to not like, (laughs) like you have to have control over your day to day, but you also can't micromanage it because it will change. And if you're not able to adapt, then yeah, no, if you can't adapt, then you can't be in PR period. Mm -hmm. And that's not just for that organization. It's for any organization. Oh, I'm sure. Because you have crisis that come up and (laughs) you're just like, okay. Especially with social media. I'm sure you're happy that you got out when you did just because even though social media was very prevalent whenever you're still working there, I think the more that social media continues to prevail, then the harder it would be to, for anyone to manage any kind of situation at all in PR and the crises. The Yeah, it was definitely like shifting whenever I was leaving because before it was like social media would be on this side of the wall and mm-hmm. then PR would be on this side of the wall. Right. And now it's just like if these things aren't completely intertwined, mm-hmm. it could be such bad news for Absolutely. people, you mm-hmm. know, so. A thousand percent. Um, yeah, it was about to be a big shift in the market. And yeah. I just decided to go a different way mainly because Ashton my husband got a new job Mm -hmm. and it was just like he was going to be traveling all the time and it was just I couldn't do it right you know what I mean well that's one of the questions that I had for you um we will jump around because I have many questions for you but I know that you were very successful in your career and you had gotten to a point that most people aspire to get to I admire your career and I think that a lot of people would love to hear advice on how you got there but I also want to talk about how you decided to make the shift to becoming a stay at home mom, because there's a lot of both that listen to this podcast. It's, it's all women. It's 98% women. But I think that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of both just in our community. And there's a lot of people who envy the other side. There's a lot of people who not in our community, but in the world judge the other side for their decisions. So I would just love to get your take on both. But before we get into that, do you have any advice for people who are looking to get into PR or to follow your career trajectory? For PR, I would say my biggest takeaway from my experience would be that no relationship is too small. Mm -hmm. Like every single person that I met along the way, I'm so grateful for. And at some point they had an influence in my career. So like if I was at an event and I met 
someone who wasn't even closely related to media relations, public relations, whatever, Mm -hmm. at some point I was calling them a year down the road, a month down the road, and I had to use them for something that I needed. Mm -hmm. So every single hand that you shake is so important. And I mean, that's how I got into the role in the first place was because I knew someone who worked there absolutely, and told me about Mm -hmm. it. So there's no relationship too small and you never know what position people are going to be in down the road either. So I would just say meet as many people as you can and literally just be there for them in their career as you would like them to be there for for your career, well if said. that makes sense. That's absolutely true. Okay. And that's I'll, I'll double down on that because whenever I first started, um, I was working in finance and commercial mm-hmm. lending, and a lot of the connections that really helped me launch my business were through the nonprofit space, so yeah. volunteering. And there were so many people that I met that I had no idea that it would ever be reciprocal because I had no need for that. Right. So just getting to help them in a way that was kind of independently beneficial, so we're helping this third-party cause, but yes. then taking those relationships that you build because they're not – I'm not helping them. They're not helping me. We're both just working towards this common goal. Mm -hmm. Then you build this rapport with them and later we can call on each other for whatever it may be. So it really helped me get some, some initial clients and help me grow my reputation at the beginning, whenever you're just trying to build that framework. So it's so important. And things, I feel like people don't talk about it enough. Absolutely. And networking is kind of a lost art just with the invention of LinkedIn and the internet. You can meet people through you know, never having to shake their hand at all. So right. when you say every hand you shake is so important, I think it's also crucial to note that you need to be shaking hands to make those connections. Yes, not everything is digital. Yeah. It is so important to like show up in front of people and just be yourself, mm-hmm. connect with them, be useful to yes. them, and also like humble yourself. Yes. Like whenever I would shake someone's hand and like they were, you know, either the CEO or I don't know, just like a marketing junior, Mm -hmm. I would be like, how can I help you? Yes. You know, like Mm -hmm. how can I make your day easier? Absolutely. Because at some point you're going to ask for favors too. Exactly. And no one wants to be that person that you don't want to respect someone or you don't give them the time of day until they have something to offer you because then maybe at that point you have nothing to offer them. So you have to give that respect to everyone, whether you think that they have something to offer you at that moment or not, because one, that's just a decent thing to do. But even in a career sense, if you're giving that respect and that, you know, kindness and communication and helping them in their career, then it it definitely does come full circle. And I've seen that many times. Yes, totally agree. So write that down if you're looking to get into PR. But Mm -hmm. as you got to this point, so Ashton gets his different job, you know, he's Mm going to be traveling. And what was that decision like for you guys? Was it something that you brought to him? Were you kind of feeling that pull internally? So what's funny is before he got the job, I told him, I was like, I don't know what's about to happen, but I just feel that there's a big shift that's Mm -hmm. about to happen. And I don't know if it's with you, if it's with me, whatever. And he was like, okay, well, if you're not sure where that's coming from, like, just pray about it. Mm -hmm. So I really dove into it, like prayed about it. I was like, you're putting this on my heart, God, like what is, what's, what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. And so I started to get this like overwhelming feeling that whatever my next step was, wasn't going to be at the current position Mm -hmm. I was in. And I was like, very scary, terrified. Mm -hmm. I was like, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm going to go like promote within my company to a different position, Mm -hmm. which is what I was hoping was the calling. Or does that mean that I'm stepping out? Does it mean I'm going somewhere else? I don't know. So I prayed about it even more. And I told Ash and I was like, I'm getting this overwhelming sense that I just need to step away from my role. Mm -hmm. And it's going to become very clear what's, what the big shift is going to be. And so he was like, I mean, if that's what you truly feel you need to Mm -hmm. do, then we need to like take the steps to start making right. this happen. Mm-hmm. So I started talking to my coworkers and my boss, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving." And mm-hmm. they were like, "What are you gonna do?" And I was like, "I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm not really sure. I think I'm gonna be a mom or work mm-hmm. remotely. I'm not sure." So I stepped away, and literally within like four weeks of me stepping away, Ashton got promoted. And with the promotion, he was going to be traveling more. And so that meant we needed a parent with full flexibility to be able to do all the things that kids are Mm going to do Right. because they were about to start school, which started their school time starts after I would have been had to have been in the office. And I picked them up before I have to Mm -hmm. before I would have been done at the office. Mm -hmm. Just logistically not even feasible, let alone would you have had the. The right. flexibility to do all the extracurriculars with them. It just it just wasn't going to happen. So it was definitely God's covering over us mm-hmm. during that time. And it just like transitioned so smoothly. But I did have a hard time of letting my career go. And um, 
yeah, I struggled with it big time because I loved my job. Yeah. And if Ashton wouldn't have gotten promoted or I wouldn't have had that call, you know, like from God, then I would still be there. Mm -hmm. I loved it so much. Well, so. that's what I was going to ask is that it's it's a position that you worked hard to get to. Yeah. And that I'm sure you got a lot of pride and identity from, which we all do whenever we have a career that we love. So I'm sure to see how that changed your perception of yourself, how that changed your your goals and your motivation and just your overall view of the world, because it does have a huge shift whenever you go through something that now you don't have emails to respond to. You don't have an event to plan, but you also are very busy in other ways. So right. walk me through that change. Yeah. Um, I don't know how, and I tell people this all the time, but like somehow after I quit my job, I'm more busy now than mm -hmm. I have ever been. Yeah. Like at my nine to five, I was, you know, in a building mm -hmm. and that was my day. Like you knew for the most part what was going to happen for your time. And now it's just like my day is like constant back to back things. Mm -hmm. And so me and Ashton say it all the time. Like, I don't know how I would be able to support you mm -hmm. or our kids if I was yeah. still doing that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just our lives have just kind of done a crazy tailspin. And it's just that the kids are at that age where we have to focus on them so much mm -hmm. more. Um, but yeah, it's been insane. And what I told myself whenever I first left and had kind of like a crisis of like, where am I going to find my mm -hmm. identity now? Because right. I was, that was my identity. Mm -hmm. Like being this yeah. PR. Like a working woman, like yes. a, a business lady yes. and all these things. And and whenever I was having that crisis, I told myself, you are replaceable there. Yes. You are not replaceable mm -hmm. in your house. Mm -hmm. And that made it come like full circle for me. And I was like, I am going wow. to do this role as good or better to the best of my ability than I did this role. Yeah. So that Absolutely. was the big shift. And that's what I, I'm still figuring it out. Like mm -hmm. I've been a stay at home mom for like a year and a half, two mm -hmm. years. I don't know how long at this point. Mm -hmm. And I'm still figuring it out yeah. daily. Well, it's the first time that you've parented a five and six year old. And the next year will be the first time you parented a six exactly. and seven year old. So it's new every time. So you're not probably ever going to get the perfect hang of it because your situation right. is always shifting. So yeah. I can't imagine that you would ever wake up one day and be like, oh, I crack the code. This is easy now. Yeah. But no, you just I adapt. don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I know that one of the things that I see in online discourse a lot with people who are either pro or against staying at home personally, then they worry that their spouse won't treat them fairly or they worry that they won't have yeah. um, that equity in their marriage. And mm -hmm. obviously I am of the opinion that your contributions are as great, if not greater than the financial contributions that the working spouse Absolutely. would provide. Yeah. But I didn't always feel that way because yeah. I didn't grow up around that. So I've, I've not really ever sure. seen a stay at home parent that had a healthy dynamic and both my parents work. So it's not, I right. didn't even have an up close view of that, but right. I would love to hear how you and Ashton work together to have that relationship, how it stays so symbiotic and how you guys have mutual respect for each different contribution, yes. things like that. I think that that's so important just like in any relationship, married, not married, whatever is to just like, set expectations for each other mm -hmm. that are like clearly defined. Mm -hmm. So like when I became a stay at home mom, he was like, this is going to be my role. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want you to have to worry about X, Y, and Z that happens mm -hmm. outside of the house because it has, I mean, it affects our family, mm -hmm. but truly you have no control over it. Mm -hmm. He was like, so this is my lane. And I was like, okay, well, if you're taking on all of that, which is things that I couldn't take on in mm -hmm. my wildest dreams, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, then this is going to be my role. Like my, our home is my home. Mm -hmm. So like, that is my job. Mm -hmm. I want my husband to come home to a clean house every mm -hmm. day. That's like one of my goals. Does it always happen? No, mm -hmm. but do I give it my all? Yes. Mm -hmm. I really try to make that happen. Yeah. So I have standards for myself and like, we have clearly defined roles and I just think it's important to, also not only clearly define your roles, but like respect each other's mm -hmm. roles. Mm -hmm. So like I can't empathize to a degree with what he goes through on a daily basis, but I know that his life stretches are so much different mm -hmm. than mine. Mm -hmm. So for me to get upset, like because he didn't pick up his plate after dinner mm -hmm. is absolute silliness mm -hmm. because he doesn't get upset because I don't know the logins to our bank accounts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right, absolutely. So like he has his things mm -hmm. and I have mine mm -hmm. and we both mutually benefit from each other's roles. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, one thing that I've loved that he's always said to me is that 
we are a team. Mm -hmm. So whatever I'm doing is for you. It's for our house. It's for our kids Mm -hmm. and whatever you're doing, same. Absolutely. So as long as we're both working towards the common goal of making our Mm -hmm. house better, then that's all that matters. That was beautifully said. And I think that it's so nice to hear that there's so much respect for both sides of the coin. And that's one thing that, I mean, I obviously respect whatever any household chooses to do, whether it's two working parents, working mom, working dad, stay at home, dad, stay at home, mom, whatever the dynamic is that works best for each family is, is amazing. And I think that career aspirations are great. Staying at home with your kids also great. I think that a combination of two great, but what makes me so sad is that we live in this society that's completely trivialized the role of anyone in the house and, and even just what you're doing. It's so crucial. And the role that you play in supporting Ashton allows him to go be better. So I think that seeing this through a societal lens would say that he's achieving and you're Mm -hmm. just there, but it's like, do you understand how much less he would have achieved if he didn't have this support, if he didn't know that his kids were taken care of and how much better off your children will be because you're pouring so much into them. And right. It's so much more than you just being there. You're being there, but you're being present and you're showing up for them. And and you've seen everyone's seen those videos online where kids' faces light up when they see their parents and yes. you're allowing yourself to give that to your kids and the moments they're gonna Absolutely. have and the confidence just knowing that they've always had a face in the crowd, they've always had someone to show up for them. Yep. That's something that's gonna set your children up for immense success and healthy relationships as future spouses in their own right. So yes. everything that you're doing, I think it's just so sad that it's so underappreciated. Mm-hmm. And I do love to see how you've chosen to pursue your dreams in the career. And now you're so well-spoken about everything that you're able to do. And I think that it's something that you should take great pride in, Yeah. but that's whenever you're a team, your husband's successes are your successes too, because 100%. you're setting him up for that. And I don't know anything about sports, but let me try and make a couple of <laughs> oh analogies. So I think that <laughs> in basketball, <laughs> You have the person who actually scores, right? Yes. But then you have the whole rest of the team that makes it possible, right. like who gets them open, who passes the ball to them, who blocks for them. Yes. I hope that's all the right sport, but you're doing that for him. You're you're setting right. this whole stage for him to go and score. So it's completely unfair for people to look at households like yours and, and point to one person as like the score of the family. Yes. It's the team. I agree with that. But then I also agree. I think that people need to shift their mindset a little bit. So like, yes, I am setting Ashton up for success because I'm doing so much on the background, Mm -hmm. but he's also setting me up for success. I never thought I would be able to go pick up my kids from Mm -hmm. school. You know what I mean? I never thought that I would be able to hang out with them after school, ask Mm -hmm. them about their day and be there from the moment that they get dropped off and picked up, Mm -hmm. that I get to be there for every single piece of that. Mm -hmm. So like his successes look different than my successes. That's so beautiful. And so I hope people train themselves to look at it a little bit differently because again, I was replaceable in my old role. I am not replaceable at my house. Yeah, I'm not. So, and if I'm not saying like, you can't do both, Mm -hmm. obviously you can have a career, you can work remote, you can go be a full-time mom and still be there just as presently, but everybody's successes look different. Absolutely. And I think we just need to all respect those. Absolutely. And I love how truly passionate you just even speak about it. So I I love that you love where you're at with your children and your family and how clearly proud of them you are. And you should be. Is there anything that you would like to say about the role of being a stay at home mom? Anything you want to clear up or just, I'm sure you've seen things online where we all exist on the internet and there are some people that are just so polarizing either way that. Um, I don't know. I really think that It is kind of polarizing, but I do feel like there are some minds that are shifting as to what success looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that whenever I stepped away from my role, I feel like there were some people who may have looked at me differently Mm -hmm. because they were like, oh, you're, oh, you're staying at home. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Like just letting go of your career. And it's just like, that was kind of disheartening, but at the same time, I don't owe any of my life choices to them. Absolutely. So when they go and lay their head down at night, they're not thinking about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. When I go down at night and I lay my head down and I feel accomplished because my house is better for what I'm doing, that's all that matters. Absolutely. And I feel like if you're helping your family grow and whatever that looks like for you, Mm -hmm. That's all that should matter. Absolutely. And the sooner we realize people's opinions don't raise our kids Mm -hmm. and don't keep them fed and don't, they're not, their opinions aren't in our marriage. That gave me goosebumps. Everything else is easier. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that what you said before is that 
Ashton's success looks different than your success, but also your success looks different now than your success would have seven years ago. Absolutely. So your goals are different and you're allowed to grow and change and your priorities and your motivations and they could change again. Maybe you'll want to go back to PR. Maybe you never will. So as your kids get older, you have the uh, absolute flexibility to change what is most important to you. And I think that with this narrative that society pushes, whether it's that, you know, the career is the most important thing or that people who work are bad and and demonizing that Mm -hmm. the only people that lose are the moms because they can't win. We can't win. It doesn't matter what we do. Exactly. And it's just like the the saying like fed is best when we're debating breastfeeding versus bottle feeding. It's like loved is best. So if your kids are loved at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you go punch a clock, if you go to work all the time, if you don't, if if your kids are loved, that's the most important thing. So totally agree. It's just like you said, no one else is thinking about you and they lay their head down, but nobody else has to wake up and live your life. So their opinion should be completely independent. But I really admire the present mom that you are. And I think that you do such a great job being involved in the community too. So I I love how close you are with your kids and it just shows how much you love your family. And I think that it's such a breath of fresh air just to see how, how much you love being around them. And I am so fortunate to be surrounded by good moms and everyone that I look up to in my friend group and in my, you know, extended circle, they love that role. And I think that it's just so nice to see people that really embrace it. So do you have tips for women who are maybe transitioning to be a stay at home mom, as far as taking care of yourself and finding time for yourself? Oh yeah. I mean, (laughs) whenever I did that first transition, it was like, honestly, I was like, what do I do with my time? And then as you slowly try to figure out like what your new daily routine looks like, um, you're going to find new passions. Like it's just going to come naturally. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then you need to search for them because you need to have identity outside of being a mom. A hundred percent. Yeah. So like, (laughs) yeah. Um, I had some free time and I started something that I felt like was going to be a free time thing. Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of like took off, but Mm -hmm. everybody needs to find their thing. Tell us about your thing. (laughs) (laughs) Well, What's interesting, though, is I started it while I was still working. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people forget that. But I would post videos back when I was still at Bass Pro. Mm -hmm. And it was like I did research on where the world was trending and like where I don't know where you could be the most flexible in your time. Yeah. And where you could still make a good amount of money. And it was like influencer marketing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well. I like clothes, so let yeah. me just try it. Let me dive and in. Literally had no plan, had no expectations, nothing, and did not ever think it would turn into anything other than just like when I had time mm-hmm. kind of thing, is which is why I was laughing. And now it's just like I I feel pressure to kind of keep up with it because mm-hmm. it has grown. But at the end of the day, I'm not accountable to anyone other than like what my expectations are, which is like the reason I got into it. Yeah, absolutely. So it's actually really nice. Well, to give some context, because you're not going to brag on yourself, absolutely you not. you <laughs> you post these adorable outfit videos and you show where you get your items and everything else. And you've always had amazing style before this took off. So it makes perfect sense why it did. Mm-hmm. And you had a video go viral and then you had another one go viral and then you had another one go viral. And yeah. then all of a sudden I remember you posting like, oh my gosh. I'm over 10,000 followers. Like what, what happened with you and your daughter? And then I checked your account. You're at 25,000. And then now you're at 76. I don't Something even know. Crazy. Yeah. Because of course I was researching your page, obviously. <laughs> so no, I, it literally, I remember posting that photo that you're talking yeah. about. I had to delete it because I got 5,000 more that day. That's crazy. And so I didn't want people to be like, what the hell is right. happening? <laughs> what were you thinking whenever that started to happen? Like, was it overnight? Did, were you like, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. I honestly was very overwhelmed by it. Cause then I was like, okay, the thing that I had been kind of hoping for happened, but now like, what do I do with right, it? Right. Right. Because this was just like a, oh, this is kind of cool and yeah. interesting and something mm-hmm. to do with my free time. And then I was like, oh my God, there's so much pressure mm-hmm. to like now show up in a way that people expect me mm-hmm. to show up. If yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. It does. Yeah. So I put a lot of pressure on myself and then I, I kind of backed off of that because I was like, you know what? I started off with 3000 people mm-hmm. on my page. So I really don't care. Like yeah. I'm just going to do what I like to do mm-hmm. in the way I like to do it. And my people are going to be my people. Yep. There's going to be some exactly. that say there's going to be some that go. And at the end of the day, if I'm not having fun, then I don't want to do it. Yep, exactly. So that's such a healthy way to see it. Yeah, I overhyped it for absolutely no reason. Like, but it's it's a huge change. Yeah, and I think that you're doing an amazing job. You have an incredibly high volume of content that you put out. How do you manage your schedule with 
creating? Do you batch create content? Do you just set aside time every day? I don't manage my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> is it a funny story? <laughs> so um, I was actually just talking to Ashton about this the other day and I was like, you know, I should probably like sit down and like figure out a way that this would work best for everyone. And he was just like, you know, don't, don't put so much emphasis on it. Like just keep doing what you're doing. Like it's mm-hmm. obviously working, but um, I just kind of fly by the seat of my pants mostly Mm -hmm. because I know that this is going to sound like a broken record kind of, but like my first job is being a mom. Mm -hmm. So like if I have things that I'm momming all day, Mm -hmm. then my content's going to wait. Yeah. And everything else is secondary. So if I get an afternoon where I'm like, I don't have to plan a party Mm -hmm. or cruise class, or Mm -hmm. I don't have to volunteer at the school, Mm -hmm. whatever, then I'll, I'll put together some content, but there's going to be some times where I don't post and I'm okay with that because I don't have the time. Well, I, I admire how much you do put out. So I think that you do an incredible job because every time I'm like, she's on her grind, (laughs) double tap, (laughs) click the Amazon link, try not to add to cart because I've been doing too much, but I think that you do an incredible job. Do you have anything that you've learned since creating content more, um, frequently like any tips you've picked up uh yes oh I mean if you're ever going to get into content creation for anyone um the biggest thing would be to just like figure out what you want it to look Mm -hmm. like so like I look at people's pages all the time and I'm like oh I like that and I I don't think it's a bad thing to like pull inspiration from people because they're successful and doing it Mm -hmm. for a reason you know so like pull things that you like but also like don't overhype yourself in your brain to the point where you don't actually just start. Yeah. yeah. So it's like never gonna be the perfect time. You're always going to make improvements and it's never going to be the perfect time. Absolutely. People think that there's just going to be this aligning of the stars. And then all of a sudden, like, you their know, pages, everything you need to know. Yes. And, and like my videos were awful when I first started, like, I don't nope. think they're awful. You did a great job. But, Scroll but, back. <laughs> no okay, exaggerating. Well now I'm going to go further. They back. were <laughs> awful. And I'm sure that it was, I mean, if I go back, I just laugh now. I'm not going to take them down because it's a part of the experience of like yeah. growing and learning. And now I'm so good at just like knowing exactly what I need. Mm-hmm. It takes half the amount of time that it used to. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's just, you have to start. Yep. Though. No, I a thousand percent agree. And one of the main things I tell clients about when they do consulting with me is that in order to learn how to create content, you have to view content like a creator, not a consumer. So when yes. we scroll, we just, we look at the video. We're like, oh, that's cute cute outfit. She's pretty like that hair, whatever. And you keep scrolling. But whenever I'm looking at it now, I'm watching this video and I'm like, okay, she's doing super quick cuts. Those are probably 0.3 second clips. She's filming in front of a window. So you have this golden light on her face. She obviously has a ring light over here. You know, the soundtrack is this, it's in cinematic mode. It's, this is with a camera Yes. and seeing how they film it. Like where are they moving? Where are the shadows in the frame? Like Mm -hmm. there's so many more things that you look at. And whenever you look at creating your own content, there are so many things that you don't realize until you're editing a video. And I know you've experienced this where you look at it and I'm like, why didn't I realize that was visible in the mirror? Like, why didn't I realize this? So looking at other people's content through the eyes that I would have whenever I'm editing, you just learn so much more. Yes. And it's like a switch you can't (laughs) unswitch. Like once you're a creator, you're like, this is the only way I look at content now. Like I know what these people are doing Mm -hmm. and it's kind of interesting. It's so true. Like my husband owns a masonry company. Whenever he drives on the road, he's like, that grout's not good. This brick is oxidized and he can't switch it off. But that's me with Instagram videos. I'm watching that and I'm like, I can see the cord for the ring light. Yeah. (laughs) And then I'm like, do I hide my cord from my ring light? (laughs) Am I doing that right? No, I think that you're doing an incredible job. So do you have anything else that you want to tell us about yourself? Any projects you have coming up? Anything you want to plug? Uh, I mean, no, not really. I just have, I feel like I'm overwhelmed. Also, I have like 30 emails in my inbox right now that are just like collab opportunities, Mm -hmm. which so exciting. Well, the thing is, I I need to respond. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, again, I'm just, like, busy. And mm-hmm. so I probably pick up, like, one of every 10 that I get. Yeah. Because I also don't like being beholden to, like, restrictions yeah. and, like, what my content looks mm-hmm. like. Of course. I yeah. want my page to be mine. So when people go right. there, they know that if it's on my feed, mm-hmm. it's something that I love. Yeah. And you, you, you know what I mean? You're endorsing that thing. So you don't just want to sell out in a sense to things that, yes. you know, just because they're going to write you a check doesn't mean that it's something that you want your name affiliated with. Exactly. And that's one thing I admire with you is that even with local collaborations that I've approached you with, then you won't say yes unless it aligns mm-hmm. with your brand. And yeah. Of course, it's always a question. It's never like, hey, I need you to do this. Right. But I really like that you stick to your guns whenever it comes to like what falls under your radar and what doesn't yeah. and what you want your brand to be. So I think that that's probably very crucial in, in your line of work to say, 
this is where I draw the line. This is what I want to promote. And this is what I won't. Yes. Good for you. And what's interesting is, is ever since getting into this, the things that you realize are a lot of content creators will just promote like whatever they're getting mm-hmm. paid to promote. Yeah. And people don't even realize that. Mm-hmm. So like just as a consumer, be aware. Yep. Because not everything that you see is something that you're actually going to want to invest in because these people are getting paid right. to do it. Right. And it's not always advertised that mm-hmm. way. So just be aware mm-hmm. that just because someone's posting a billion outfits a week, mm-hmm. like they're keeping maybe like one of those. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? That's interesting. So mm-hmm. just be aware. I love that. I think it's it's good to keep your heads up when you're consuming these things. Because, yes. And it's not even dishonesty. That's just their job. You know, it's their job yeah. to promote things. So we can't villainize them, but like don't expect them to. They're not. No. And I don't want to villainize them. Oh, no, not that you were. <laughs> all because I, I literally mm-hmm. do this for a living, mm-hmm. but just like. I feel like sometimes people have like this pressure to like keep up. Yes. And it's just like, that's not even like real life. Absolutely. Like their their job is to promote and sell clothes. So of course they're going to have a bigger wardrobe than you. Of course they're going to have the, and the top trends the second they come out, it's not up to you to keep up with them, but I I fully agree with you. And then on, on the creator side too, like you can't be made to feel bad for trying all these clothes as a creator. That's your job. That's how you make your income is creating content with these clothes. So I mean, it's the same thing as we talked about before. It's people just love to point fingers. They love to say who's bad at yes, what. So a hundred percent. I think that it's a great disclaimer that you made. And to finish this up, I have a fun question. What fall trends do you see in fashion? What are your favorite trends? Anything along that line that you want people to keep their eye out for? Um, I think that denim on denim is going to be so fun this Canadian season. tuxedo. Yes, love. which I actually love. I've always been a fan mm-hmm. of the Canadian tuxedo. Dark denims dark leathers and then obviously suede's going to be huge beautiful um not great for me who spills a lot but that's okay yeah yeah (laughs) that could be tricky but again I just feel like dress the way that you feel the most confident Mm -hmm. like I like to try on these things and share them because people are going to see them be like oh that fits like my style right you know it's Mm -hmm. not going to be for everyone so just like know the things that you're confident in and then just stick with them and Mm -hmm. as long as you feel good Mm -hmm. That's going to be what's in style. Beautiful. Beautiful yeah. way to end that. I think that you're incredible. I think that you're so eloquent. You're so well-spoken. Obviously, you're very mm-hmm. intelligent. You're very passionate. I love the way you love your family, the way you love your life. I think it's just been a breath of fresh air talking to you, as mm-hmm. always. I love that we can talk about fashion and we can talk about deep stuff. So thanks for having me. No, thank you for your time. I know you're yeah. very busy, so I really appreciate it. And I will plug your page so everyone can follow along and get oh, all the gosh. outfit inspo. But thank you for joining us. Of course. We will see you next week, guys. Bye. Bye.